All right, welcome to another week of the No Code News. Things have caught my attention during the week in this space. There'll be some AI, but it's a real big focus on No Code. This is week 43, 2025. Let's look at what's in the news. The first one is anthropic skills. This is that moment where it might seem like some code, but it's actually just markdown written in a way that can then not just clog code, but clog desktop. So now the user who isn't a developer could take this desktop app, add these skills and automate some things that normally would have taken code. So for example, one customer had to go to a particular website, do a bunch of things and download data. Now they can just make this skill explaining that process and, and they're done. So these skills are actually probably right up there with MCPs with a level of news and innovation. And it's also another reminder, as I mentioned OpenAI a little bit later on, that Anthropic really seems to understand the businesses right now. I, I don't know who the audience for OpenAI is. It's all over the place. But Anthropic seems to understand the business needs really well. So it's, it's, they just keep nailing it there. I mean, none of these companies are perfect, but just a thought. All right, the next item that was really, really a big deal actually is softer workflows. This is a big deal because like recently there was Agent Kit and everyone's like, it's Agent Kit going to replace N8N. But this is the stuff that will replace N8N because it's seamlessly integrated into this user-friendly layer so that the normal business owner, manager, person can come in and build what they need, add some automations with just their AI database stuff. And now this, where you can actually do things from events and then integrate AI and integrate workflows. This is where NADN should be worried. I think this is going to eat their lunch in many ways. So this is really good stuff. If you're building no code and you really want to solve the layer of UI, that could be the hardest layer of all because still with Lovable and everything, it's just hard to connect the dots. This is the place to go. Now with workflows, it's just even that much better. Intranet is solved. If you're still coding in the intranet, I think you got to really step back and wonder why. All right, the, the next one is Zeno. I just heard another podcast about this, so it's interesting. It seems to be built in some ways by the someone who used to, it's a few people building it, obviously, or two, but someone recently in a podcast was about uh, from Google, a designer who's now here doing this. So there's a lot of focus on this no-code backend stuff, making it applicable to the designers, the normal builders, the managers, but then also a developer. So it seems like they're really trying to bring all this together into a platform that will solve this at the no-code level, be that backend, that API you need. And again, like you're seeing it in a few places, this, Sim, Kestra, Active Pieces, which we mentioned in a moment, like... There's a lot of options here to, especially at the internet, like I'm not even talking, hey, you have you have a, a public facing website where people want to know about the glasses you sell. There's so many off the shelf solutions for that as well. But I'm talking when you're in that internet and you're connecting all the dots of the business workflows and the data. I mean, again, you can't, it's just, it's such an easy win. Now, Zeno or N8N, there's a lot of like, hey, which one do we use? Like, I mean, any way you go right now is better than coding. And if you start investing in these tools and paradigms, even if they change or get replaced in a year by better AI, you're spending less time and money on code in debt that comes with that. So any direction is good at this point. So start moving forward in these, I think, is key for any company. And there's options, as you can see. And speaking of OpenAI, they released the Atlas browser, but honestly, I think he covers it really well here, and he just talks about how Comet still has them beat, and he does a good comparison here in this YouTube video. So I'll share that link in the notes. And basically, great, It's that's where things are going. Giving the user the power to open up their browser and automate things is awesome and key. I just don't know if they nailed it yet, and I think Perplexity has had a head start on them. So I'm sure they'll get better, but just pointing out, Ooh, cool, interesting news, but you already have perplexity and they're doing a better job potentially. Another one from OpenAI is this integration with your knowledge, your company knowledge. It's cool. I, I think, again, I don't think they can pull it off for any company. If you're focused on using one company like OpenAI or Microsoft, you're going to lose. You need to pull in all the different models and different options and different places that m some companies are better than others. You would never not want to use Eleven Labs or HeyGen for your video audio stuff. So if you, like, you've got to integrate these things. So the moment you settle just for one company to do it all is the moment you've kind of lost. So I think this is great, but I'd wonder why you'd settle for this overall. I just don't know why. I don't know where, it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to pan out. I just can't see them pulling this off as the end all stop for all your AI. But it's an interesting one because in the end, context is king, it's key. 
in anything we can do to bring more business context into place with the AI, the better. But will this be good enough? I haven't checked into it yet. We'll see. Shared projects is another news thing that they released. So see how that one goes as well. They also acquired a company that had something to do with Apple shortcuts. And this deeper OS integration is super interesting as well. So if they are getting into this, great. If they're all in the game, great. If OpenAI can really make it easier to dig into the desktop and automate things, then again, we're giving that user the power they need. We're democratizing how complex automations and AI is and building is to make it available to everybody. That is great. So I hope it works out. It's, it's something that's worth looking or keeping an eye on. So the next one is just uh, Google's Vibe Coding. Now, they have a video here on that and or news about this. And so basically, there's also a good video on that. And I will try to find the link for that. I thought I had it here. But basically, I talk a lot about no code. And the risk with vibe coding is that you, you create a lot of solutions and then you have to change them or manage them. And it can get hard. The AI slowly falls short on its ability to manage the particular updates and everything you need. So there is that risk with vibe coding. But they, they did a good job with AI Studio to allow you to vibe code and build something on the fly. And they're just, Google's doing a good job right now. Gemini seems to be doing really well at mini apps, Opal. So with this new feature of vibe coding, people are really excited. I'm seeing a lot of stuff on YouTube about it where it's not even hard. It's, it, they're doing a good job of making it easier and easier to deploy. How does it compare to Lovable? I'm not sure. But I mean, again, it just, let's see how it goes. I mean, Google has a little bit more in than Lovable to, to kind of the back end stuff with Google cloud and everything. But I mean, that's not always that great either because then Google's too overly committed to that stuff where Lovable can do super base. So we'll see where it pans out overall. But these mini apps are really, really interesting. So this is one step away from that. And it is coding, but it's just that moment of like, well, maybe I need to build a nice UI and I couldn't pull it off in softer. Maybe I use this and then connect the dots that way. It's tricky. All right, just a quick ad here. I like this Ridge charger. It's the Ring MagSafe compatible magnetic power bank. And I have an Android phone, so sometimes I need it. But here's an Apple phone. And you can see that it not only does MagSafe in the stand and everything, but you'll see in a moment it can connect via the lightning port for the older phones. That's what I really like about it. You got to remember when you do wireless, you're always losing energy as you charge. So with the wired charging, you get faster charge and just, you know, you're going to get all the charge into the phone. And of course, it has USB-C, so we win there as well because, I mean, it's USB-C and it can hook up to my Android phones and any future Apple phone that I most likely won't own, but other people in my family do. So yeah, that's it. And it hook connects to the new uh, Google phone. So that's a great win as well. So there you go. Nice, strong connection. It will charge that way. And of course, you have the stand as well. All right. I mean, uh, I have some links below. If you use those, it does help to support the channel. So please give it a go. Thank you very much. The next one is really exciting. It's Active Pieces and an article about their enterprise agents. One reason I've backed away from Active Pieces a while back was because they just didn't have the agentic stuff in place yet. I wasn't able to make that AI agent to say, hey, these guys have some, we have some tools here. We have an, M oh, they could do MCP, but a MCP is like a level down from that. So maybe they have this agent stuff in there now where I can do proper AI agents, sub agents and stuff. And then I can integrate with APIs or MCPs that I build or that are out there. And I can make more agentic flows happen or just build APIs. If they're really doing this at this level, I'm definitely gonna check them out because they're friendlier to use in N8N. They're trying to be more maybe like Zapier on the friendliness. And uh, I mean, the license is just better and their API looks a lot better than N8N. So I could maybe build more stuff through the back end. So I'm really gonna dig into this shortly at a job I'm on right now. So I'll let you know if that works out. All right, some other stuff going on is I save a lot of stuff here to this URL. And basically, it's YouTube videos during the week that I watch that I really want to share and make sure come up in this news. In this one here, this guy does some great YouTube videos. Let's see what his name is again. Sorry, he, he does really well. So Cole Medin. So basically, my point is I, I don't agree with this at all. But it's a good argument. When to code, when to do, do, uh, use no code. I've seen it go perfectly fine with no code for months and months and months, complex projects and everything. So I don't agree with it, but 
he's so on the ball with so many things to listen hear him out is worth it's worth a listen and and just see what you think just to kind of get a sense of when and, and what's out there so that is one i want to share now the other thing i want to do is start surfacing the the basically the low code or no code news going on on github there's a good youtube channel that does a lot of like trending github so i want to bring some of that here as well and so some of that is uh tools like appsmith toolJet, refine buddy base I want to just kind of mention those and see what's going on every week so I can keep up on top of them. All of those are good solutions to look at for a team. BuddyBase is a little bit more user-friendly and the license a little bit more maybe flexible. Refine.dev was something I had to use because we had to code. And so it was a good way to go because I could get the flexibility I needed out of it. But at the same time, I had documentation to help the AI build it the, the right way. And so I want to just surface those every week. So I'll, I'll start bringing that in more and present it better here. Other things to consider too is the N8N. So let me not focus on N8N, but there's a list of no-code agent orchestrations going on right now. N8N has 151 stars. We have Diffy, D-I-F-Y, with 117,000 stars. So you got to start really focusing or looking. You can't just settle for one you got to realize they all have their place and some might replace others as companies fall behind. But you got Diffy, you got Flowwise still up there with 46,000 stars. Uh, Flowwise is, is they, they really do a good job at the agent first, the RAG system. They just brought it together a little bit more simplistically than N8N. All right, the next part of this news, I want to kind of bring in some stuff that's trending on GitHub for no code and, and low code solutions. Now, this was inspired by this channel here, GitHub Awesome. Really worth watching. He has a lot of different topics he focuses on and brings them together to show what's going on with trending. So in this case, I want to surface no code base. So there's a lot of, if you think about GitHub and GitHub stars, it can help you see what's popular and what's kind of getting attention by developers more than managers or the, maybe, you know, it's tricky because we're in a hype, a lot of hype. And so if you go at this level, you might see what's really working for people. And so when you look at stars for low code platforms, no code platforms for built UI building, you have AppSmith at 38,000, ToolJet at 36, Refine.dev at 33 and BuddyBase at 27. But here's this no code base at 17,000 stars. And so it, it's just, an, I'm going to be checking this out because I, when software doesn't work, when I can't use it somewhere, I want a way to build these things. And BuddyBase is great, but will this be better? I need to find out. And again, like I mentioned before, you can't just stick to one because like in time, things get better or change. And, you know, like if you stick to one, and you don't go to this other, then you might just be kind of falling behind or not investing long term into something. I know it seems like you can't, if you keep leaving these different platforms, you've invested a lot of time into it. But I think it's less than ever before because it's so easy to get going. And even if you change to three platforms, you probably spent less time than if it was all code. So really keep an open mind. Like you can't just say it's N8N and then we're done. It's it's whatever and then we're done. You gotta just keep an eye on things. So no code base. So now the, the one everybody talks about is N8N, but what I wanna do is highlight a few other things. So back to the star thing, uh, let me move this over. The N8N is 151,000 stars, but here's Diffie with 117,000. And that's really good. And this is open source and their license is good. So I, why am I not using this? Why am I not testing this out? I got to go find out. I'm going to go look to see what does this offer. Maybe it's a better API than anything. Maybe it just offers a better UI for the user. Like so many possibilities to just not try it is just crazy right now. So that's Diffy. And then we have uh, Flowwise. Now, look at Diffie's 117 and Flowwise is 46,000. So you can see there's quite the gap. But, you know, just keep that in mind that we have Flowwise here, which is still a great solution for building agents, uh, chatbots, and things like that. And again, these can work together. You can have it be the nice chat interface to your MCP that's on N8N. Like, you can mix these things up. It's not one or the other. And then we have, of course, I mentioned Kestra before. It has a YAML interface with drag and drop UI. Some of the particular people who come from microservices or more code based might be more comfortable with this. It's worth looking into. Uh, these things are doing really well. And if you just take a moment to look at the insights and the trending to get ahead of it, it's really worth it as a company, as, as, a, as an organization, to just kind of be aware of this stuff. And then we have such so Kestra, and then there was Sim. 
I mentioned Sim a while ago, and um, you know, I, I still haven't looked into it. Just no good reason. Just really busy. Um, but this is another one to keep on your radar. Seventeen thousand stars. And lastly, table or table is like um, there's a few of these. Pocket base, I think, is the other one where super base is amazing, but it's quite heavy. So if I could do something a little bit more lighter, but still give me the uh, stuff I need off. That's the thing though. Do I need auth if I'm then using um, no co-base, right? So you got to figure out the balance here. So as I use software more, I need super base less. So when do I need a database? When do I need these different type of foundations? And if I do want need one, then I want something that's friendly to use for me and whoever's next. So I'm going to look at this one and see how this Postgres based collaboration spreadsheet with AI chat <laughs> works. So that's another one I'll keep an eye on. And again, I'll, I'll surface these every week as well because it's helping me to just kind of be aware of what's out there and see outside the, the thing I think about a lot with building and working day in and day out with NADN and software. All right, that's it for the news for week 43. I hope that helped. If you, I mean, I need people to subscribe. I need to support the channel. I'm trying to do more and more of this. So just join, subscribe, share. YouTube is a place to go. I have a podcast there. And then Substack has some offerings, but I also have the community on YouTube. I'm going to build up more and more. So please do so and share. All right. Thank you very much.